I'm Rusty and this is You Fix It Garage. In today's video, we're going to be talking about SIG grip modules and specifically whether you can etch or mark a SIG grip module using a fiber laser or a diode laser. You're going to want to watch this video all the way to the end because I'm going to show you some really cool stuff that you can achieve on these grip modules. So for reference, the lasers that I'm using today, uh, this one is a 50 watt JPT uh, fiber laser with 175 millimeter lens. I bought it from SFX Lasers. I went with them because there are multiple importers that import these into the United States. Most of them are made in the same place in China, just imported by different people. And SFX is one of the largest uh, importers into the United States. They sell on Amazon and they have a US distribution hub. They were super receptive when I called and asked them any questions and I couldn't be happier with the purchase. I would highly recommend them if you're looking for a fiber laser. Um, the other laser that I'm using is a diode laser. It's an X-Tool D1 Pro uh, 20 watt diode and I ordered it from Amazon also. I'll put a link in the description. And then finally, the computer program that I use to run both of these lasers is Lightburn. If you're new to uh, the, the laser world or you just got a brand new laser and you've got to learn a program anyway, I would suggest start out with Lightburn. Spend a little bit of money, buy the program and the licensing for it and uh, you'll be glad you did. None of these folks are uh, sponsors of my channel. I 100% paid for all of this with my own money. And uh, the way you can help me out is by hitting that like button, that subscribe button, um, add a comment in the comments. All of that helps uh, the algorithm to drive traffic to my channel. So I appreciate it if you do that. And then finally, if these settings that I use today are of interest to you, you can watch my other videos and get the rest of those settings, or you can just go to the link in the description to my Etsy store and for less than a dollar a piece, you can download all seven colors that I'm going to show you um, and import it into your light burn program and you can start marking today. So let's get to it. Laser. What started me down this rabbit hole is that I'm a big SIG guy and I wanted to be able to uh, etch some of these polymer frames. I am not in business. I don't run a fiber laser business, um, but I wanted to do it for myself and maybe some of my friends. And so I started doing research. There's a few videos out there and there are some people that uh, do this commercially who have obviously achieved it on some lasers, but they don't really share their settings or the particulars about what laser they're using, at least not that I've found. So that's the reason I'm making this video, just to share my results. Um, there may be other ways to do this and if you know a better way um, or you've achieved a good way, please share it in the comments. All right, so here we go. All right, so here we are in Lightburn. I've got a pattern pulled up that I think is representative of uh, what a lot of people do uh, when they're doing stippling on a polymer frame. And I've got it sized the way I want it. And then just go over my settings that I'm using, 1500 millimeters per second with a frequency of 50. We're gonna do max power, so that's high power, relatively high speed, um, kind of a medium level frequency that most people should have. Uh, line interval is uh, 0.1 um, and a scan angle of 45 degrees. We're going to cross hatch it and do three passes. So that'll, uh, that'll give us a rough idea there what this thing is accomp will accomplish. It'll do. And so here's what it accomplished with three passes. That is at full power again and uh, it's just very light, not very deep at all, and it more burned than uh, anything. Uh, the deeper that I go, the, the worse that burning is gonna get. So um, let's try another frequency setting and another speed setting. All right, back over here in light burn, I am gonna change the frequency to 100, and uh, I'm gonna use the same speed, same power, but this time I'm going to do 10 passes and I want to see how deep it'll burn into it. All right, so back to the laser. Passes. That was very hot as you saw. Let me show you the results. So that was definitely too hot. It just melted, really didn't uh, 
it didn't turn out very well at all. So we're gonna do one more. I'm gonna lower the power and keep the speed the same and uh, see what that does. All right, this time we're gonna take the power down to, let's just do 35%. All right, that'll be pretty good. We're gonna keep the speed the same. I'm gonna leave the number of passes the same and I'm gonna leave the frequency the same. So let's see how that does. All right, you can see that one still, again, just melting. And uh, I've kind of been at this for a while. We could stay testing this all day long, burn up multiple grip modules. But I think for the most part, I've come to the conclusion that the fiber laser will not etch into this polymer, um, at least not cleanly, where uh, you can get the results that you would want to have a really good looking firearm. All right, so etching is out with the fiber. So let's move over here to the diode and let's see what it'll do. Now, before you uh, click away from this video, I want you to stay tuned till the end because you are gonna see that we can achieve some pretty cool stuff uh, on these grip modules with the fiber, um, but I'm gonna save that for the end. So let's move over to the diode and try it out. All right, here I've got the grip module in the uh, X-Tool. Again, this is a 20 watt diode laser. A big problem with a diode laser like this is, would be framing. If I was gonna do this, in this laser, I would actually build a, uh, a template to hold that in place um, so that it wouldn't move so that I could start at the same point every time. Let's do a little test on it. This is going to be kind of loud because this is a louder laser and uh, we'll see what the results are on it. Okay, back in Lightburn. Like I told you, the reason I love Lightburn is I can switch. Uh, here I've got uh, my D1 Pro. It's just as simple as switching between lasers right here and uh, I'm switched over to the next laser. I've got them both hooked up to the computer. And so I've got the same artwork in here. Let's go up here to the speed and power settings. I've got a maximum speed of 200 millimeters per second, um, uh, which uh, for this laser is pretty fast still, and a max power of 50%. And bi-directional fill, we still got number of passes set at 10. I think I'm gonna back that down to two just to uh, see what we got, and let's etch it. There you go, that is the result with the diode laser. And again, it just really melts. It doesn't really obliterate the material um, like you want. So that's probably not going to work, but I'm going to do one more and I'm going to do max power and slow it down just a little bit. We're going to go to 100% power and we're going to slow this thing down to 50 millimeters a second. And yeah, we're going to leave all the other settings the same. We're going to go with that. All right, this is the last one that I did on the diode, and it, it cut a little bit deeper, but it's still just really melting the material and not uh, obliterating it like you'd want to have a good clean etch. And so for me, that is not a good enough quality for something that I want on my firearm and definitely not for a firearm that I'm doing for somebody else. So I'm gonna say the diode laser is also out. All right, so from my experimentation at least, uh, etching is out with the fiber laser or the diode laser, um, at least in any kind of quality. If you have settings for this that you know work, um, please post them in the comments, or if you have a different type of laser that it works with, post in the comments and let other people learn from you. Now let's get to something that does work, and that is marking these in color. If you've watched any of my other videos, you've seen that I've done uh, videos on PMAGs and the color colors that can be achieved on them. You can check out this link up here and uh, go watch those videos. And I'm gonna use those exact same settings to achieve color on this grip module. It's pretty cool, you're gonna wanna watch this. All right, back in Lightburn, and I'm over here in my fiber laser. And 
This is my library uh, under firearms and PMAGs. Here's all my PMAG colors. And I've got a graphic pulled up here. Uh, this is an organization that I work for. And I'm going to do this logo on the grip module of that uh, P320. So uh, I'll open up my settings right here. This red color right here is going to be a light tan. And this black color is going to be a dark tan. So my settings for light tan. Um, speed of 5,000, max power of 15%, frequency of 50. We got bi-directional fill on, crosshatch turned off, line interval of 0.05, 45 degree scan angle, and six passes. That's going to achieve light tan. Dark tan, uh, speed of 30, 3,800, max power of 35, frequency of 50. We're going to do a line interval of 0.075, bi-directional fill and crosshatch are turned on. And we're going to do a uh, 45 degree scan angle and one pass. That will achieve the dark tan. All right, we're framed up and ready to go. This won't take but just a few seconds. So here we go. And just like that, we're done. All right, so there's what we were able to achieve with coloring. Now the texture on here makes it a little bit harder to see because of the texturing and the lettering, but you can see the distinct different colors. Maybe if I would have used a little darker brown, that would be uh, a little more distinct. And if I do it again, I probably will. But I think that's a pretty good result uh, just for a very quick mark on a frame. Um, if I turn it over, this is just a single color logo that I put on here, and uh, I think it looks pretty good also. So let me show you the rest of the colors you can achieve on these frames using my same settings. All right, we're back in Lightburn one last time, and this is the part that you definitely wanted to stick around for. So I've got my PMAG color chart pulled up here. Each one of these colors corresponds to one of these colors over here that I've developed for PMAGs. And I intentionally cut off the settings because I want you to go check out my other videos. And uh, I give you those settings 100% free in my other videos on PMAGs. So uh, anyway, this is all pulled up. I am going to fire up the laser again, and I'm going to show you what it looks like on one of those frames. Got the grip module framed up, and this won't take but just a few seconds. So here we go. And just that quick, we're done. This is that same grip module we've been testing on, and check this out. So there you've got, if I can get my finger over here, there you've got light gray, dark gray, light tan, medium tan, dark tan, a medium brown, and a dark brown. The dark brown starts to burn just a little bit, so I don't know if I would recommend it, but the rest of these uh, leave a perfectly smooth finish, and they change the color uh, really well. Hey, so there you go guys. All my videos are designed to help you out 100% free of charge. If you found value in this video, the way you can pay that back is to hit that like and subscribe button, hit the bell icon for notification of future videos, and add a comment in the description. All those things play into the algorithms that drive traffic to my channel. And if you'd like to help out financially, you can use my affiliate links that are in the descriptions of the videos to purchase things or you can go to my Etsy store. And again, for less than a dollar a piece, you can download my entire Lightburn library for PMAGs, import it into your Lightburn program and start marketing today. Thank you guys for watching.